Hey. Hello. Monday was Multiple Personality Day, and you're watching Pirate TV. Welcome to this week's episode of Pirate TV. I'm Braden. I'm Frayden, his alter ego. Every week, Mr. Daniels drops some knowledge with his inspirational quote of the week. I'd love to check out what's in store. Dude, do you even know what the quote is? No, but that's why Luke is going to show us more about it. Hello Pirates, thought for the week, don't ruin a good today by thinking about a bad yesterday. You know, oftentimes we don't let things go. I deal with a lot of situations and I say, well, when did this happen? Well, when we were in middle school, two years ago, why are we holding on to bad memories? Those have a tendency to cloud our thinking for today. So we got to learn how to let things go. Live for the moment. Don't hold on to yesterday if it was bad. Let it go. Live for today. What do you think that means? I mean, it's what it sounds like. Just because yesterday was bad doesn't mean today has to be bad too. Um, I think it means that if something bad happened yesterday, not to ponder about it and that the next day should be good and start out new and fresh. I think it means that don't let yesterday ruin your good day today because it's not worth it. I think to me that means like every day is a new day and you get to start fresh and even though that yesterday was bad, you can have a good day today. All right, back to you guys in the studio. What an inspirational message. You said it, me. By the way, have you heard about the book drive that's coming up? All right, you know what? I can't do this. I'm done with Pirate TV. You're just going to leave me here all alone? All right, let's read into this book drive with Eric. Book drive? Huh, I guess it's a charity to give books to kids. Now that I think of it, I'd probably be better at reading if I did it more when I was younger. Maybe I can help others get more smarter too. Now back to you guys at the studio. Hey, can I get some help here? Oh, hey Jack, are you gonna donate any books? I might as well, it's not like I was gonna read them anyways. Okay, we also have a blood drive coming up. It's nice to see these good causes at our school. Matthew's gonna show us what's up with the blood drive. It starts on March 12th. Um, from 8 to 1 in the CTE building right in front of Mr. Barnhill's classroom. You can sign up by getting a form from either Ms. Brewer, Ms. Wattenbarger, or Ms. Rowe. And you have to be 16 and older, teachers and students. So, yeah. And, um, but if you're 16 or 17, then you need a parent signature. Here's what you need to do to prepare yourself for giving blood. You need to have a really iron-rich meal the day before, eat a good breakfast, drink lots of water so you don't pass out. It wasn't bad, like it doesn't hurt, you just sit there and they have little TVs and you can watch a movie and you get snacks after, so it's great. Yeah. So they take one pint and one pint goes to three different people, so you're technically saving three different people's lives with about 30 minutes of your time. 
that you get to miss class. So, I mean, and you get cookies. So it's an all-around win-win situation. So just come out, support. You don't have to be in host, by the way, if you want to donate. It's totally for everyone and anybody. You're right, Jack. It is nice to see people donating to good causes. It sure is. Hey, speaking of nice things, you know prom is coming up, right? It is? Oh, right, it is. And Zach has more to share with us. So prom is coming up in April, and if you don't have a date already, now is the perfect time to ask, unless you're going with a group of friends or just by yourself. But here's my 10-step plan to make the perfect promposal. Step one, get in your car. During the day, preferably, but night works too. Step two, drive to Walmart. Step three, go into Walmart and go to the office supplies section. Step four, grab some poster board and some Sharpies. Step five, check out and then put it in your car. Step six, wait until the next day to do it because you know, procrastination. Step seven, grab it from your car and look online for some cheesy promposal puns or make up your own or just write prom on a poster board and hope they get it. Step eight, write on the board whatever you want. I chose a simple route of just writing prom and don't forget the question mark because if not, they may just think you just wrote prom on a poster board for no reason. Step nine, go ask them and be creative. Step 10, after they say yes, buy your prom tickets in the main office for our Gatsby themed night that is from eight to midnight for juniors and seniors at the Marriott right next to Crabtree. Get your tickets fast before they go up in price. Those prices will be from February 26th to March 9th, they'll be $45 per ticket. From March 12th to March 21st, they'll be $55 per ticket. And from March 22nd to March 28th, they'll be $65 per ticket. Man, I don't know what I'm going to do with all these people doing promposals. I'm not doing anything because I have no friends. Okay, we're almost adults now. We're getting older. Yeah, the elderly have many things they have to deal with that young people don't. Will is here to show us how people deal with problems they face when they get older. So my nursing fundamentals class obviously is prepping to go and take care of patients in the hospital. So one of the activities that we do to prepare them is something called the into aging activity. Um, so there's four different stations that are set up in the classroom. Uh, the first station is called um, stiff fingers and so they have to put um, gloves on that have cotton balls in the tips to um, mimic um, degeneration of the feeling in the tips of the fingers and they have to try to get change out of a change purse. They have to try to button buttons and this mimics um, patients that have arthritis, um, different um, problems with dexterity in their hands, opening up pill bottles, that kind of thing. The second station is loss of vision. So they have several pairs of glasses that they can put on that you know, mimic different things like, you know, loss of peripheral vision, cataracts, macular um, degeneration, and they have to try to put together a puzzle, and they have to try to write things, they have to try to read, and it's very difficult because they realize that they can't see very well. So station three is loss of mobility. Um, in this station, the students actually put shoes on the other foot. They put beans into their shoes to mimic um, bunions, different arthritic conditions of the feet. They wrap gauze around their knees. Um, again, decreased mobility for the elderly. Um, they tape fingers together, uh, again, to mimic arthritis. They wear glasses so that it's difficult to see. And then they use a walker or a cane and they have to actually carry a bag of groceries. And again, they see the difficulty in what these patients have to go through. Station four is loss of hearing. Um, at this station, they put cotton balls into their ears and they have to play cards. Um, and this, again, mimics the loss of hearing that occurs with age. Uh, they have to see what it's like to have to ask repeatedly, do you have a seven? <laughs> do you have you know, an eight or do, would you like to play? And they can't hear each other. And again, it gives them that experience of knowing what it's like to be elderly and the things that they go through and our bodies go through as they age. It's good to see people participating in something fun and informational. Well, that's it for this week, Pirates. We'll see y'all later. Perfecto. <laughs> Pirate. <laughs> Pirate BB. Oh. <laughs> what? Are you actually... We are conducting a... No, we're not doing it. We're not leaving this room. Do not leave this room. 
Yeah. <laughs> Can we stay in here? We gotta record. What? No! 